There are two types of meningitis, leptomeningitis where there is inflammation of the pier and arachnoid mater and pachymeningitis which is inflammation of the dura mater. Just in case you don't know, the pier and arachnoid mater are the thin membranous meninges that are closely adherent to the brain and the dura mater is the thick fibrous covering just beneath the skull. In leptomeningitis, the infection spreads through the CSF. The infection is usually blood-borne, but there may be direct spread of infection from the middle ear, mastoid, nasal or dural sinuses, or an infected CSF shunt could cause leptomeningitis. And of course, penetrating wounds reaching the leptomeninges could cause leptomeningitis. This is a section of brain from a patient who died from acute purulent leptomeningitis. And you can see that the subarachnoid space is distended by the purulent exudate. And this is a higher power view showing normal brain tissue on the left and on the right is the purulent exudate composed predominantly of neutrophil polymorphs. The population most at risk of acute purulent meningitis are children and the elderly and it affects approximately 5 per 100,000 per year. There are broadly three main types of leptomeningitis. Acute purulent or bacterial meningitis is the commonest cause of CNS bacterial infection. Lymphocytic leptomeningitis is usually viral and chronic Leptomeningitis may be caused by organisms such as TB and Cryptococcus. Risk factors for acute purulent leptomeningitis include overcrowding and poverty, alcoholism, immunosuppression, diabetes and patients who have had splenectomies. Splenectomy patients who are not on prophylactic antibiotics are at risk of pneumococcal meningitis. The type of bacterial organism causing acute purulent leptomeningitis depends largely on the age of the patient. So neonates are at particular risk of E. coli, streptococcal and listeria meningitis. Haemophilus Meningitis used to be most frequent between the ages of six months and four years, although this is thankfully now rare with the success of the vaccine. Meningitis caused by Neisseria meningitidis type B, or the meningococcus, is perhaps the most frightening type of meningitis, and this occurs most frequently between the ages of two and 18 years. Over the age of 30, the most frequent type of acute purulent leptomeningitis is caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae type 3, or otherwise known as the pneumococcus. This is the gross appearance of acute purulent leptomeningitis in someone who unfortunately died of the condition. You can see that the brain is covered by a purulent exudate in the space between the pier and arachnoid mater that is closely adherent to the brain. Meningococcal meningitis is the most common type of bacterial leptomeningitis. It may be sporadic or epidemic and spread is via nasal droplets from asymptomatic carriers and the organisms reach the cerebrospinal fluid via the bloodstream. Patients with acute purulent leptomeningitis will feel unwell, they'll have a stiff neck and photophobia, that is um, an aversion to bright light. And sometimes these symptoms may be preceded by an upper respiratory tract infection. Complications of acute purulent leptomeningitis include septicemia and DIC. This may manifest itself as a petechial rash 
This is the one that doesn't go away when you press a glass on top of it. Another serious complication of septicemia and DIC is adrenal haemorrhage or Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. In the slightly longer term, complications include hydrocephalus, where the flow of CSF is impaired, cerebral infarction, cerebral abscesses, subdural empyemas, that's a collection of pus in the subdural space, and epilepsy. Of course, the most serious complication of acute purulent leptomeningitis is death. This is the gross appearance of adrenal haemorrhage, otherwise known as Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome, and this patient unfortunately died from meningococcal septicemia. The adrenal glands sitting at the top of the kidneys have a rather dusky appearance due to the bleeding that has occurred inside them. In acute purulent leptomeningitis, the lumbar puncture findings are a turbid CSF. The number of neutrophil polymorphs present is significantly increased and there is also an increase in protein, but glucose is decreased. This is the CSF from a patient who had acute purulent leptomeningitis. And you can see that there is an exudate composed almost entirely of neutrophil polymorphs. In viral meningitis, the symptoms are less severe than in bacterial meningitis. The condition is self-limited and histologically the leptomeninges are infiltrated by lymphocytes. The commonest viruses involved are Coxsackie, ECO, Epstein-Barr, mumps and poliovirus. CSF changes include an increased number of lymphocytes, increased protein and glucose is normal. There are a number of causes of chronic meningitis including tuberculosis, cryptococcus, Lyme disease and syphilis. TB meningitis may follow primary or secondary complex in the lungs and the symptoms are of meningitis or they may be non-specific and TB meningitis is very serious and often fatal. Cryptococcal meningitis is particularly common in AIDS patients. An infection with Borrelia burgdorferi causes Lyme disease and Treponema pallidum causes syphilis and both these conditions can cause chronic meningitis. This is a section of brain from a patient who died from TB meningitis. And as we zoom into the subarachnoid space between the pier and arachnoid mater, you can see that in the CSF, the main cell type in the inflammatory exudate is mononuclear cells, predominantly lymphocytes. Finally, let's look at pachymeningitis. This is due to inflammation of the dura and the usual cause is direct spread of infection through the bone, maybe due to penetrating skull injuries, fractures or osteomyelitis, infections of the mastoid, middle ear and sinuses. Organisms causing pachymeningitis are usually Staph aureus or Streptococci and complications include subdural empyema and leptomeningitis.